Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark didn't just kick off a franchise, he launched an entire cinematic universe that still to this day, over a decade later, continues to break box office records and entertain audiences around the world. And it takes a special type of character to be able to pull that off. Tony Stark's personality had to not only be witty and entertaining, but also deeply human for others to either relate to or at least empathize with. So today, let's explore the personality of an icon that started a universe. I am Iron Man. Now to dive into Tony Stark's personality, I will be using the Enneagram, which for those of you who don't already know, is a personality typing system made up of 9 unique personality types, each focusing on unconscious ways we deal with trauma and stress. If you're interested, I have a video that explains how it all works as well as a series where I explore each type in depth through the use of movie characters, but today I'll just be typing Tony Stark. A character commonly typed as either a 3 or a 7. Type 3s are individuals with an intense focus on achieving success and managing their image so as to gain respect and admiration from others, which I could see fitting Tony. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. But on the other hand, Type 7s are individuals that primarily focus their energy and attention on pursuing pleasure, happiness, and fun so as to avoid pain, discomfort, and boredom, which I could also see fitting Tony. The party's over. Then again, the party was over for me like an hour and a half ago. The after party starts in 15 minutes! So which is it? He shows a lot of Type 3 and 7 qualities, but at the end of the day, he can only have one personality. Is he a success-driven achiever or a pleasure-seeking enthusiast? Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to exit the donut. One of the most common ways to start a protagonist's character arc is to first establish not only their personality and likability, but also the way they psychologically trap themselves. For example, Luke Skywalker has dreams and aspirations of adventure, but traps himself into believing he's just a farm boy and isn't special enough to go on one, so he never does. That is, of course, it just happens to him. Hello there. It's one of the most tried and true ways of giving characters a little more depth and relatability since we as the audience have our own psychological traps we need to escape from in order to grow more as individuals. What makes the Enneagram such a useful tool for writing and understanding characters is that it shows the nine basic psychological traps people can have, which will be instrumental in determining whether Tony is a three or a seven. From his first scene, we learn that Tony is quick-witted, charming, popular, and even a little egocentric, all of which are characteristics that can line up with both Type 3 and 7. 3 because they typically thrive being the center of attention, which is often fueled by a need to be admired by others, and 7 because they usually find social settings to be fun and exciting distractions from the anxiety and uncomfortable thoughts that they feel they need to escape from. So the question is, is Tony seeking admiration or distraction? Does Tony believe that he must be more than who he already is in order to have value as a human being, the type 3 psychological trap, or does he believe that he must indulge himself into as many pleasurable experiences as possible and overly reframe negatives into positives in order to escape the thoughts and feelings that chase him, the type 7 psychological trap? I feel like this question is immediately answered by the following scene. Tony is given a prestigious award, and instead of accepting it in person, he's always working. Tony's a type 7, thanks for watching. <laughs> Seriously though, a type 3 would much more likely accept the award in person given that their personality revolves around pursuing achievements to win over admiration from others. Yes, Tony is still the center of attention at the casino, but it definitely seems to be more of a source of fun for him than validation. And as the film goes on, Tony never seems to be chasing approval from others in the same way that type 3s do. Movies centered around type 3 characters usually focus on themes that revolve around identity and self-worth. They express a need to prove themselves and deeply care about what others think of them since they are an other referencing type, meaning they focus on others first and prioritize becoming what they think others want or need of them, which can become a problem for them when they do it to such an extent that they lose sight of who they really are. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! This is never an issue in Tony's character arc. Overly reframing negatives into positives and compulsively pursuing fun and pleasure so as to escape anxiety, boredom, and difficult emotions which in the process leaves behind a trail of chaos and disorder that in turn only causes even more anxiety? Well, that is Iron Man. And he honestly couldn't care less about how others perceive him since sevens are a self-referencing type, meaning they focus on their own needs, their own plans, and their own pleasures and prioritize their energy on pursuing that above all else. Not only that, but as you'll soon see, the Type 7 stress growth points also line up with moments in his overarching character arc, from the move to one, which symbolizes taking charge and responsibility for one's actions, as well as striving for higher ideals like in Iron Man 1 and Civil War, to the move to five, which symbolizes becoming more consistent, thoughtful, and focused, especially in terms of exploring their inner experience at greater depth like we see in Iron Man 2 and 3. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. 
In the first act of Iron Man 1, Tony displays many average to unhealthy Type 7 qualities. He's hell-bent on pursuing pleasure. You ever lose an hour of sleep your whole life? Prepared to lose a few with you. Lacks responsibility. You are constitutionally song. incapable of being responsible. It would be irresponsible not to drink. I'm just talking about a nightcap. And focuses so much on positives that he fails to see any negatives. Peace. But his constant avoidance of negatives eventually brings to light its very consequences. <laughs> Tony's forced to face reality with nowhere to escape, and this pushes him to both metaphorically and literally confront what he was always blissfully unaware of. His weapons end up in the wrong hands. The rest of Iron Man follows his healthy move to one. And yes, you can move to either number positively and negatively. All Enneagram experts agree on this now. I'm being responsible, that's a new direction. At the end when he reveals to the public that he's Iron Man, he's not really doing it out of a desire to be admired, but more because it's fun and less of a hassle to hide it. But what about the whole cover story that it's a bodyguard? Iron Man 1 serves as a great depiction of the first steps of growth for Type 7. Tony begins as a compulsive pleasure seeker and becomes more responsible after finally confronting the negatives in his life. I just finally know what I have to do, and I know in my heart that it's right. But this is only the beginning of his journey. While definitely one of the weaker MCU movies, Iron Man 2 still does a good job of continuing Tony's growth as a 7, with him now battling an ironic life-threatening side effect of the arc reactor in his chest that keeps him alive, which he responds to by indulging himself into exciting and adventurous experiences to distract himself from his impending death. When put in stressful and uncomfortable situations, Type 7's experience an instinctual and driving need to escape and move on to something more fun or pleasurable so as to stave off pain and anxiety. It's for the most part entirely unconscious, however, with them often thinking they're just simply bored. You still think he's a three. This guy. Dude literally gets bored with his company in a moment of stress and hands it over to Pepper. It's boring. Boring. I'm giving you a boring word. You do it. I do what? Excellent idea. I just figured this out. You run the company. I explain this in more depth in my Type 3 video, but in short, threes in moments of stress have a tendency to do the opposite. They'll double down and work even harder. I'm not fucking leaving! <laughs> Just like Type 7, Tony's an escape artist, constantly maneuvering his way out of facing his pain and fleeing into exciting distractions, but he's never truly free from his anxiety. Got any other bad ideas? It almost always takes him to be completely trapped with no escape but through himself to actually face it and grow. In Iron Man 2, Tony makes the Sevens move to 5, becoming more introspective and concentrated on his inner experience without running from it, which ultimately saves his life. By now I'm sure you agree and get the idea that Tony is in fact a Type 7, and his journey from here only gets more interesting with it becoming more of a quest for balance. Over the course of the Infinity Saga, Tony increasingly becomes more and more idealistic and responsible to a fault, the negative move to one, leading to the creation of a super threat to humanity that he naively thought would protect it, and splitting apart the Avengers over his convictions. But eventually, he finds balance and becomes a remarkably healthy Seven. In Endgame, we see Tony living a simple and grounded life, free from any distractions or even any fear and anxiety to distract himself from, because he has finally discovered that life has enough to satisfy him. He doesn't need pleasure or distractions or even a perfect world. He just needs what is, and what is, is enough. It's no longer about how many experiences he can fit into his life, but more about the depth of which he can experience his life. And with this growth, Tony faces life head on along with all of its pain, and because of it, saves the universe. And I am Iron Man. I mentioned this in my video explaining Type 1, but an interesting aspect about Tony's character arc when viewed through the lens of the Enneagram is that he and Captain America share a connection to each other. Cap being a Type 1 grows to be less idealistic and more self-interested in making the move to 7, and Tony being a Type 7 grows to be less self-interested and more idealistic in making the move to 1. In short, the two grow towards each other, and in the end become whole as individuals, ultimately fulfilling their character arcs. I believe there couldn't have been a more fitting personality to launch the MCU than Type 7. 7 perfectly embodies what these movies are and what they represent. Fun, spectacle, adventure, humor, a distraction and escape from pain and reality. However, like Type 7, they're better when they don't run away from it. They're at their best when they embrace their darker and sadder themes, giving the characters and stories necessary weight to make you care. Because when you care, laughing means more than just something to ease the tension. It means there's a real connection. A connection to an entire fictional world full of superhuman characters with fantastical powers. And again, it takes a special character to be able to pull that off. Thanks for watching.